Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ on this third Sunday of Easter, and yet today we celebrate a special life, a special day in the life of Benjamin Landry, his confirmation. Today's sermon is based upon the Old Testament reading. Please join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the gift of life bestowed upon us through your Son, Jesus Christ which enables us, O Lord, to know that through his death and resurrection, nothing can ever separate us from the love of Christ. Therefore, we can go into any change in this world that we must face, knowing that we do not go alone, but that you go with us. So knowing this truth, we have strength, we have courage as we move on into the future. Help us not, O Lord, forget these promises that you bestow upon us, your children. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends in Christ, every culture has rites of passage. They serve a good purpose. For society and for the individual who goes through these rites of passage, a statement is made that this young child is now to be seen as an adult and to be given adult responsibilities. Now, some of these rites of passage have social impact. For example, I remember my sister having her sweet 16-year-old party communicating to the world that she was now going into the world no longer as a child, but as an adult facing some adult responsibilities. And in Spanish cultures, if I get the name right, the quinceanera, when the girl turns 15, again, it's another one of those presentations, another rite of passage where things are changing. And some of these rites of passage also have spiritual aspects. For example, in the Jewish faith, you have the bar mitzvah if you're a boy, and the bat mitzvah if you're a girl. And in the Christian faith, in the Lutheran church, we have what's called confirmation, a rite that Ben will be going through here this morning, a rite in which a statement is being made to him and himself to us that he now is a little bit more responsible for the preservation and development of his own faith. He is giving up thoughts of a child to move into thoughts of adulthood and to be thinking more in the light of taking on these adult responsibilities in regard to the Christian faith. These things can be exciting as they are new ventures, but sometimes as adventures they can be very scary. Are we ready to take on the responsibilities that are bestowed upon us once we cross over? Once we move through these rites of passages, are we ready? I kind of think that might have been some thoughts that was going on in the heads of the people of Israel as they were now again sitting on the edge of the promised land. It was an exciting time. They were to experience a transition from going from nomads to dwellers. The fulfillment of the promised land was near. They were about to enter into a land flowing with milk and honey, a promise that had been given to their ancestor, Abraham. It had to be an exciting time. But I bet you there was also some fear because 40 years ago, their ancestors stood on the same spot and they failed. God turned them back because they refused to trust in God's promises. They refused, to, they refused to trust in God's strength and God's leadership. Twelve spies went in to see the land. Ten of the twelve came back saying, we can't do this. Two, Joshua and Caleb said, we can. Their protection has been removed. Our God is with us. But the ten carried the weight that day, and they rebelled against Moses and his leadership. And again, they told Moses things that he's been hearing for so many years in his life. It'd be better for us to go back to Egypt. There we had at least three square meals a day, and there we had a roof over our heads. It's odd, isn't it, that the people of Israel believed that Egypt could take better care of them than the God of Moses? But that's what went on. They got scared. Because of their fear, because of their unreadiness to walk into the promised land with God's strength, 
God sends him into the wilderness for 40 more years, saying that none of them will ever step foot in the promised land. None of them, except two, Joshua and Caleb, the faithful spies. And so God prepares them, those young children, who because of their parents are sent into the wilderness to wander for 40 years, prepares them to take the land the next time. You think about it. For 40 years, these people are walking in a dry, arid land. And God somehow is providing for over 600,000 people. He is making banquets in the desert. And so they are beginning to see that God takes care of us. For 40 years, he's taken care of us. He's not failed. And then also their ancestors, the parents that refused to go in because they were scared. I'm sure they had table talks, right? When they sat down at dinner and one of the kids said, Mom, Dad, why are we wandering for four years? Why does Moses have us going in circles? And I'm sure that the ancestors had to fess up and say, we're going in circles because we sinned. Don't do what we did. We're not going to see the promised land because of our rebellion. Make sure you stay faithful so you get to see the land we do not. God was preparing them those 40 years, building up their trust in his power and in his presence. 40 years later, here they're now standing on that boundary again. And they may have some questions. They may have some fears. Because God deals with them in truthfulness. And he gives them a statement of fact right away in Joshua chapter 1. He says, Moses is dead. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, that statement means more than just a statement of fact. Ask anyone who's lost a loved one when someone has, says, my loved one has died. It's a statement of fact, but it means more than that. It means that life is going to be different now. There's going to be a transition they're going to experience. Things aren't going to be the same. You can't go home again. Moses, my servant, is dead. That's sometimes what God tells us as we go through our own transitions in life. As we go from childhood to adulthood to retirement, every stage we hear in a way, Moses, my servant, is dead. Things are going to be different. Kids, adults experience transitions, whether it be from student to career, whether it be from childhood to adulthood in the realm of confirmation the like. We cannot go home again. Neither could the people of Israel. Moses, my servant, is dead. But God told them that despite the death of Moses, despite this transition that was going to take place, not to fear. For God would be with them. God told them in our gospel, in our Old Testament reading today, that he would be with Joshua as he was with Moses. He says to Joshua himself, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. With this promise, Joshua is able to be strong, courageous, and as a leader, leads other people to take the strength and courage that has been stowed upon him by the promises of God and lead these 600,000 plus people into the promised land the transitions of promise. Benjamin, today is a special day for you. You are making a transition this morning. You are transitioning from childhood of faith to adulthood in faith. We are here to celebrate this glorious day with you today, Benjamin. We're glad for you. But you know, Ben, I got to say this. You experienced a major transition some years ago in your health. Yes. But you know, throughout that transition, in your little journey, you mentioned about your strength and journey, which I'll be reading here in a few minutes. Yes. And you have this wonderful strength and courage that I have seen in just a short time I've known you, Ben. Yes. You've been moving on into life. 
because of the courage you did and you took that surgery, you're still here. Your life is preserved because guess what? You're bringing joy to a lot of people here. God has enabled you to survive because God's got a plan for you, and that plan is to bring joy into people's lives. Then you got a lot of people here today. Yeah, you got all of them. They're here because they admire you. Yeah. They're here because they admire you, they respect you, they appreciate what you brought to their lives. But you know what, Ben? You inspire them. You inspired me. Because people in our world sometimes need people like you, Ben, when we struggle with strength and courage ourselves. And we look at you, Ben, and we see the strength and courage you exhibit in your life. You inspire me. You inspire a lot of these people here today. I appreciate what you've brought to my life, Ben. And I'm sure the others appreciate what you've brought to them as well. You've done a great thing that you, God has worked through you. But you know, you mentioned about your strength and courage in this reading. I'll share with them shortly. But what I really want to share with them also is you know the secret. Because you've chosen your confirmation verse wisely. Your strength and courage, Ben, comes from Jesus. Jesus has given us this wonderful promise that he's going to lead us through all transitions regardless of what they may be because he's promises for us. You have given me hope in my life. You've given me inspiration. You've given me strength and courage. You've done something. You've brought something to my life somebody has not ever done. I appreciate that, Ben. Congratulations on your confirmation. This transition into life, whatever they may be, God is with us. Because of the promises, we can be assured of that. Even when we face the ultimate transition of death. There's a great verse in Scripture, Revelation 1, verse 4, that says, Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. Think what that means. John 3, 16, we hear that Jesus is the only begotten Son which means there's no other one else. But when it comes to death, Jesus is referred to as the firstborn, which means there's others to follow. Amen to that. Others like you and me. He's just the first of many to follow. As Joshua led the people of Israel into the promised land, Jesus, through his death and resurrection, leads us, the new Joshua, into the true promised land, living with our God Christ and the Spirit forever and ever in eternity. These promises help us deal with any transition in life, regardless of what they may be. I love that promise St. Paul says in Romans 8, 38, neither death nor life, principalities or powers. He just lists a whole bunch of them. But what he concludes is saying this, will ever able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing, no transition can separate us from God's love. These are the promises that Paul not only expressed, but Paul also lived. We see this and hear this very clearly as he writes to the people of Corinth these following words. We are of good courage, I say, and we prefer rather to be absent from the body and be at home with the Lord. These are not words of fear. These are words of excitement. In his name, amen. <laughs>